How you guys doing? Welcome back to Nintendo Prime. We have three big stories for you today. Uh, and you know, not every news story we talk about is always a positive. So we actually have um, sort of, at least for us Nintendo fans, a couple negatives. But we do end on a very strong note today with one of the best stories I think I've actually heard in 2022 for Switch. So that's really exciting. But before we get into that, hey, if you're brand new to the channel, why not drop a like and subscribe? In fact, I really love our subscribers a ton. So much so we're giving away an Xbox Series X, a PlayStation 5, or a Switch OLED to one of our subscribers this month. All you have to do is head to that gleam.io link down in the pinned comment or the description to enter. All right, let's start with, well, the bad, right? They always say, Start with the bad and with the good. And that final story, you really want to you know, wait around for that one. We got timestamps down below. Now, another employee is leaving Nintendo of America. We've actually seen quite the influx of employees leaving Nintendo of America, really since the closure of the uh, California you know, studio of theirs. They're kind of focusing everything into Seattle, Washington, where their main headquarters are located here in the United States. Uh, we obviously saw Kit and Crystal leave. They now have their own podcast. They were the hosts of Nintendo a minute well now we have samantha robertson leaving and if you don't know who samantha robertson is i guarantee you've probably seen her at one point because now we're showing you clips of her presenting things during e3s various e3s and various events she's been one of the main presenters for nintendo at these events really making her one of the faces of nintendo of america and she has left the company she put out this statement on uh, twitter and a goodbye message she said last week i wrapped up at nintendo it's been an honor to work with such wonderful people but the pandemic has emphatically underscored that life is short and not to take for granted. I have roads yet to explore, and as cliche as it is, there's no time like the present. I recognize that being able to take this step back is a privilege, and it's not a move I make lightly. I'm excited to share future updates with you as I figure out what comes next. I'm going to recharge, spend time with friends and family, dig into projects and creative pursuits that have been languishing on the back burner for too long, and consider new ways to contribute to the industry and people I care about. Video games and the gaming community remain a huge part of my life. This is an industry I am passionate about. I think it's incredible. I think it can be even better, and I don't think I'm done with it yet. So wherever she decides to pop up in the future obviously is up to her and not determined at this point. So she doesn't seem like she left Nintendo because she has another job somewhere else. I think she just feels exhausted after the pandemic, wants to take a step back and then jump back into the industry through a different avenue, venue, company, whatever in the future. Uh, so thank you, Samantha Robertson, for obviously uh, being incredible at your job and presenting and playing games for us. And obviously everything you actually do for your job that isn't about being on camera. Uh, and presenting Nintendo games. Obviously, that's what we see public facing, but we all know the Treehouse employees are busy translating games and testing games and you know putting in the real work uh, that all of us just get to enjoy and sometimes not appreciate as much as we should. Uh, don't worry, it's not like Nintendo of America is completely gutted. We still have Bill Trent in there, baby. We all know him. He's like, though, I don't know, I'm almost surprised he's not the president, but hey, Doug Bowser is, so you know, cool. All right, let's move into our next story and again i told you bad stories to start today but we end strong and this story is well it, it, it's a bit rough so nintendo has decided to go to archive.org and take out something that's very special we're talking about of course the strategy guide for mario 64 that only came out in japan it was a japan exclusive uh, strategy guide there are scans of it that existed on archive.org it only had a one print run back in 1996 only released in japan so the only way people could enjoy this little part of this little nugget of gaming history to enjoy the dioramas they actually made for the maps it was actually pretty cool was to go to archive.org and actually well you know look at it these things are decades old never been reprinted there's no money to be made off them for anybody archive.org doesn't make money off it nintendo doesn't make money off it and well yeah nintendo decided you know what we're taking this out you're not allowed to host this material it's copyrighted material goodbye they press delete on it again nintendo he likes to hit that delete button a lot lately so let's actually get into some comments made by the people who originally had this up at archive.org because they really succinctly put what exactly happened here and why it doesn't make sense 
Sadly, archive.org sent me their usual takedown notice email telling me Nintendo of America challenged the copyright of the scan and it was removed. Frankly, I'd love to challenge the legitimacy of that and how Nintendo of America would have anything to do with the Nintendo of Japan licensed gem books guide from 1995. But I can't really fight the Nintendo legal team here. It's incredibly disappointed. While I fully understand protecting one's IP and copyrights, I didn't think I was hurting anyone by scanning and uploading a 27 year old guide that is extremely out of print. Truthfully, I think it helps Nintendo while only hurting the people selling this guide for literal hundreds of dollars on the open market. All I wanted to do was spread my love of this incredible guide to the larger extent of my love for the company. I'm a rookie to the video game preservation scene, but I can't think of anything more depressing than how it's a bunch of hardworking people spending their free time and money painstakingly archiving and preserving history while major corporations like Nintendo are doing nothing to help. In fact, they're actively hindering the cause. Now, it's a bit extreme to obviously, you know, take this case and try to apply it as a blanket across the entire industry. But yeah, we obviously know game preservation has been hard and obviously gaming media and guidebooks like this preservation is very, very difficult because, yeah, somehow Nintendo of America is copyright claiming a Nintendo of Japan only book. It's really weird. Uh, I'm not saying that they don't have the legal right to do it. It's obviously hosted on, you know, American web servers. And maybe Nintendo of Japan kind of poked Nintendo of America to go deal with this, but it's weird. It's out of print. It's not coming back. It was 20, you know, almost three decades old at this point. Um, it, it, it's just, it, it's a bit baffling. There's really no negative side for Nintendo other than them saying, nope, our characters, our guidebook, no. I, I don't understand Nintendo sometimes. But hey, at least we end with a positive story. Our last and final story, folks. It's a rumor, but oh boy, is it a doozy, and we hope that it's true here at the Nintendo Prime Studio. And what are we talking about? Call of Duty coming to Nintendo Switch, and no, not what you think. You might be thinking, oh, we're getting the shitty Call of Duty mobile game. Well, to be fair, it's actually not that bad. But no, we are not getting that game that's on all of your phones. No, we are actually getting a real Call of Duty game on Switch, according to this rumor. Let's dive in right now. So this actually comes from a user on Twitter. I know, so that's a, it's a rumor. You know, supposed insider being reported by a lot of big outlets, which actually brought this to my attention called Ralph's Valve. I actually don't know his history. I just know a lot of big news outlets are covering it. So, hey, here you go. Here's what he said on Twitter. It gets a little confusing until the final tweet. Um, I don't know if it was intentionally confusing, but here, here's exactly what he said in a little thread on Twitter. Activision are reportedly considering releasing remastered Call of Duty titles repurposed for newer consoles to fill out the empty space between premium Call of Duty titles. So this kind of makes sense. They're planning to do away with the yearly release of like the brand new Call of Duty game. So yeah, kind of like Pokemon Company did, fill it in with remakes and remasters. That, that has some, some validity there. And then he follows it up with saying World at War, Call of Duty 1 and 2, backwards compatibility for Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare Remastered are currently what's in conversation. Everything else was described by an associate as complicated. So that's like what they're talking about, but everything besides that gets a bit more complex. Uh, and then he ends the thread by saying, addressing some of the confusion, Modern Warfare Remastered is supposedly coming to Nintendo Switch. It's first introductory into the Call of Duty franchise for the console. So right there, Modern Warfare Remastered, which actually originally released in 2016, but now they're gonna just like somehow make it forwards compatible and then backwards and cross-gen and do all this crazy stuff with it really soon for PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X. When they do that, they're also gonna bring it to Nintendo Switch, supposedly. That would obviously be the very first Call of Duty game on Switch. And you know, look, Switch has some other alternative military shooters. Uh, Sniper Elite Series, I actually find to be quite incredible, but that's not really based around massive multiplayer like Call of Duty is. So it's actually really exciting to me to see one of the better Call of Duty games that have come out in some time. Of course, it was a remaster of a really great Call of Duty game, so go figure that that's one of the better ones uh, coming to Nintendo Switch. I think this really sets things up for future Call of Duty games to come to Nintendo's next generation platform whenever that comes out. 
But we'll see. Microsoft obviously likes working with Nintendo. They're buying Activision Blizzard. Suddenly Activision's bringing Call of Duty to Switch. So yeah, I guess this actually turned out to be pretty good. I actually presumed when Microsoft bought Activision Blizzard that we would see less games coming to Switch. Uh, turns out maybe we're gonna see more. So this is really good news, really exciting news to end our video today. Uh, I wanna also end by reminding you guys that we will be streaming Kirby and the Forgotten Land, by the way, that game came out today. If you haven't bought it yet, why don't you use our Best Buy affiliate link down at the top of the description because if you do so, we actually get a 22% kickback to the channel. So that's a way to just buy the game you're already gonna buy and still support the channel. So that's really cool. Uh, we're gonna be playing that game tonight. And when I say we, I mean we, not just you and you, you know, me and you guys, it's gonna be me and Eric. Eric from the Nintendo Prime Podcast is coming over tonight for a very special launch stream for Kirby and the Forgotten Land. We're gonna be playing it together in co-op mode, getting as far into the game as we can uh, in about three to four hours. It's going to be a lot of fun. I hope to see all of you guys there. Uh, it's our game stream this week, but it's a launch stream and I think it's going to be great. The stream's already up if you would like to go uh, set your notifications because YouTube notifications kind of suck for live streams if you don't set them. So that's why the stream's already set up for you. All right, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in and I'll catch you in the next video.